All right, so check this out. A few years ago, my best friend and fellow English teacher texted me that one of my students had been arrested for indecent exposure on the bus. I was shocked because I never would have imagined this student doing that. On the same day I received the text, my husband and I went to hang with some friends. We were sitting on their couch when I remembered the story of my student's arrest. I said to my husband, Hey, one of my students got arrested. My husband said, I know, on the bus, for indecent exposure. I asked him, How did you know? He said, You told me a week ago. Now, I tried to explain to him that I had just learned about it that day, and if I had known last week, I would have already told my best friend. The fact that she didn't know until that day when she texted me tells me that I wasn't having some sort of memory lapse. But my husband insisted that not only had I told him, but we had searched on his office computer to see if it had made the news yet. I can't explain how my husband knew this story beforehand, but the fact that he specified the charge and location before I could reveal those details tells me that he really did know. And searching for it online is exactly what I would have done. Except I didn't. Was that an alternate reality that he experienced? Somebody, please fill me in. Nine years ago, I had an experience that I still can't fully explain. Maybe it was just my brain playing tricks on me, but it was unusual as nothing similar has happened to me either before or since. When I was a teenager, my friend, let's call her Sarah, and I went to a local festival that our town hosts annually. This event is essentially a community gathering with street shops, live music, and the like. It's actually quite boring. However, one special feature is the opening of several historic buildings that are typically closed year-round, except for this day. Now, this part is a bit cringy, but we were weird teens after all. We thought it would be fun to enter the largest of these buildings and search for ghosts or anything paranormal since we were pretty into that stuff back then. We wandered around the building, which is an old cabin from the 1860s, but the presence of other people somewhat ruined our experience. We decided to wait until everyone else had left before going up to the second floor to start recording. The upper floor of the cabin isn't very big. Once you climb the stairs, you face a small child's bedroom. There's also a short hallway to the left that leads to the master bedroom, with another small closet area inside, and that's all there is up there. Anyway, we went into the child's bedroom first and started recording in there. We joked about the mirror being haunted, made fun of a straw hat that we found, and even joked about seeing a ghost in the window. However, Nothing unusual actually happened, and once I got bored of that room, I decided to check out the master bedroom, but Sarah wasn't quite done looking yet, so she stayed. When I was in the master bedroom, I filmed around for a bit and then filmed in a small closet, but again, I saw nothing. As I turned out of the closet, though, I was surprised by a girl that I hadn't seen before. I didn't even hear her coming in. She asked me what I was doing, and being the introvert that I am, I was embarrassed to be recording a closet, so I stopped recording, quietly said, nothing, and then went outside to find Sarah. When I got outside, however, Sarah wasn't there, and a minute later she came out and she asked, why did you just leave me in there? When I explained that I thought she'd left me and that I had encountered a random girl, Sarah said, that was me. You just ignored me. That's when things became really strange. The girl that I saw didn't resemble Sarah at all. Sarah is short, blonde, with blue eyes, and was wearing a white shirt with shorts that day. The girl that I saw was much taller, had dark brown hair and eyes, a longer face, and was wearing a dark blue shirt. I never looked to see what type of pants she was wearing, but her voice was deeper than Sarah's as well. It was like talking to an entirely different person. After that, I really didn't believe that it was Sarah that I saw, so I decided to look at the recording. 
But of course, I cut it off while I was filming in the closet just before the girl approached me. I distinctly remember stopping the recording after seeing the girl since I was feeling embarrassed about filming in a closet, so that really confused me. It was like something you'd see in a horror movie where you think you have proof, only for it to miraculously disappear. Unfortunately, I don't have the video anymore since this was almost a decade ago, and even if I did, it would only show me filming the room before it abruptly ended in the closet. I'm sure anyone reading this might be a little skeptical, as I would be too, but it's definitely one of the most unusual experiences I've ever had. As I said, it could have been my brain playing tricks on me, but you'd think experiences like this would happen to me more often if that were the case, so some of you may also think that I was just imagining it since I was specifically looking for ghosts, but we'd done that countless times before with nothing like this ever happening. I also don't think I'd imagine a ghost that looked so lifelike. This was like encountering any other person on the street. It didn't seem paranormal at all. All I know is that it's an experience I'll never forget. This person includes an update that's rather long. They say, after replying to comments, I was reminded of other experiences that happened to us after this that are related, so I'll share them now. There are two things that I'd like to point out. However, I was 16 at the time and she was 15, so we were young, but not like little kids or anything. I'd also like to point out that Sarah and I were mentally in sync, if that makes sense. I mean, we thought almost exactly the same, to the point where it was creepy. We even used to make fun of it. She's a very positive person and I'm a very negative person, so we'd make fun of that old opposites attract proverb. I mean, we were so in sync that we'd almost have at least 12 jinx moments where we would say the exact same thing at the same time every time we saw each other. And these weren't common expressions either. These were just random sentences and phrases every single time. We actually wondered if we knew each other in past lives and that's why we had that connection. I'm not sure if past lives are real, but if they are, I have no doubt that we'd have met. We also had this weird ability where we seemed to be able to sense when one of us was about to call or text. We'd get this feeling, and within a minute, it would happen. It was such a strong connection that our other friends even noticed it and pointed it out to us several times, so we knew that it wasn't just us. That all sounds completely made up, but I promise it's not. I've never had that connection with anybody else in my life and I'm afraid that we lost it after she moved and then we lost contact, but I cherish those memories. It was such an unreal experience and one that I hope everybody can have at some point in their life, but I don't think many do. Anyway, the reason I decided to bore you with that long explanation is because when I saw the strange girl in the cabin that was apparently Sarah it really did seem like a completely different person. I didn't have the special connection with this girl, and it was like talking to a complete stranger. I think that's one of the reasons why I remember the experience so well. All right, well, I'll get on to the other two experiences that I was reminded of and I think are related to this one. The first happened the afternoon after we visited the cabin. During our time in the cabin, we took this old shoe buckle that we found we weren't the best of people. It was about an inch and a half or two inches long, and that afternoon we were jumping on her trampoline with it, trying not to get hit by it, because why, why not, right? I distinctly remember that it fell off five times. Up until the fifth time that it fell off, we had no problem seeing where it landed and then retrieving it within a few seconds, but on the fifth time, we couldn't find it. We both saw exactly where it fell off and it was right between the springs so it couldn't have gone far. We both searched for it for about an hour, both under and within a 50 foot radius of the trampoline, but we just couldn't find it. I even went back a little later with my metal detector and it was nowhere to be found. To this day, we've never found it and we both joked at the time that it probably went into another dimension. Weird, right? The second experience is very similar to that one. 
We also took this old button from the cabin at the same time we took the buckle. Again, not the best of people. <laughs> and after we spent about an hour looking for the vanishing buckle, we decided to do the same thing with the button. And I'm not kidding when I say that it also disappeared the first time that it fell off. After that, we decided just to go inside because it was creepy that two things from the cabin disappeared in the exact same way. The difference here is that we actually found the button about a week later in the clothes basket in her closet, and she swears to me that she didn't go looking for it after I'd left. There's always the possibility that she did look for it and just planted it there, but it didn't seem like she was lying. And we had an excellent ability to tell when the other was lying because of that special connection that we had. I do still have that button as well. Well, after writing all this down, it does seem like a far-fetched tale, but this really was just one long, unusual series of events. I've never had anything quite like it happen before or since. I'm sure there could be a logical explanation for everything that's happened, or maybe it was just really a series of unlikely coincidences. I'll never know for sure. So, you can make of it what you will. I do know for sure that she and I had a connection unlike anything that I've ever experienced, so I at least know that that much is true. And maybe that connection is why these weird things happen to us. For my birthday on Sunday, my mom wrapped a bunch of my childhood things that she's found in the storage over the past few months. I'm a very sentimental person, so this was an amazing gift. The most exciting thing that she found was one of my troll dolls. It's an Easter troll that my grandparents gave me when I was little. He has a little white jumpsuit with colored eggs on it and a little bunny ear headband. This little guy is extra special to me because both of my grandparents have passed. When I unwrapped it, the ears were missing. She said, wait, his ears aren't in there? I had them. I think, I think I know where they are. So yesterday, I went up to my parents' house to visit. I brought the troll so I wouldn't forget to grab the bunny ears. And when I took the troll out of my purse, my mom said to my dad, Where are the ears? They were on the back of the chair. They weren't there anymore, though. While she looked for them, I went into my childhood bedroom to look for something else. And placed right in the middle of my Care Bear desk was the bunny ear headband. I saw it as soon as I walked in my room in plain sight, so I grabbed it and went back out to the living room. When I got out there, my mom said, here you go, and held up the bunny ears. Identical. Identical bunny ears. I was like, um, mom? And then I held up the bunny ears that I had found in my room, and we were both like, what the frick? I only had one Easter troll, and he only had one headband. And these headbands that we were both holding were identical. They were exactly the same in every way, except the one that she found had a broken band. I threw the broken one in the garbage. The placement of the one that I found in my room is really strange. I thought my mom had put it there so it wouldn't get lost, and there was nothing else on the desk, and she doesn't really meddle in my bedroom. Every time I go up there, things are exactly the way I left them. And that headband sure as heck was not there the last time I was there. I would have put it away with my old toys. I have OCD and everything has its place. It gets weirder though. Today, I texted my mom and asked her not to take out the garbage. I decided I wanted to keep the broken headband as proof that this happened. I mean, it was just too weird to ignore. And she responded, what? So I repeated myself. I said, I want the bunny ear headband that I threw away, so I'm going to have to dig through your garbage the next time I come up. She said, it's on the table. And I said, what? No, I threw it away. She said, so you didn't take one? I said, yeah, I did. I took one. I took the one that wasn't broken. And she replied, well, the one on the table here isn't broken either. Now I just feel crazy. I've experienced a lot of really weird stuff in my life and I have a list of them written down and this is easily one of the weirdest things that I've ever experienced. I keep trying to rationalize it but I just, I can't. 
I only had one Easter troll doll. One. And the magic, broken twin bunny ear headband climbed out of the garbage onto the dining room table. And then it mended itself? No way. There has to be an explanation, but there just isn't one. This author also includes an update that says, I mistakenly thought the garbage had been picked up, and it had not been, though. It was still on the curb. My dad took the liberty of digging through it, and he couldn't find the third pair of bunny ears. It's crazy. I worked at a bar and restaurant for two years. I have a great memory and only really recreationally smoked a little weed, and not during any of this, and never before or during work, by the way. I became genuine friends with a handful of colleagues and at least friendly with almost everybody. One day, completely out of the blue, everyone had different names. Mark was James, James was Mark, and so on. And now these names are just hypothetical for privacy reasons. But I was in complete shock and I've never been able to explain it. I'm good with names and these people were on my Facebook. As a manager, I even onboarded some of these people and saw official documentation and the names all shifted. No new names were added, just swapped around. Can anybody tell me what happened? I live in a small apartment complex about two kilometers from my town. Today, I had to go buy new work pants and went to get in my car and a guy was standing in my driveway, just staring at me. He was wearing some distinct clothing, large blue headphones, a light gray trench coat, and had long black hair. My driveway is a dead end. There's no reason for a stranger to be standing there, so I asked him if he was okay and he looked at me and then started walking out of my driveway. As I was pulling out of my driveway to the main road, I watched him closely because the thought of him being up to no good had crossed my mind. I pulled out and watched him in my rear view for as long as I could see him, and he continued to walk in the same direction that I was driving, so I thought nothing more of it. I arrived at the department store and parked only a few meters from the entrance, and I walked in, while driving, the trip only takes about three or four minutes, but walking, it's about a 15-minute walk. And to my surprise, as soon as I walked in, that same guy is standing in the store, staring at me. There is no mistaken identity. This guy had a distinct look and very distinct clothing. I make eye contact, and he turned his back and briskly walked away. There's no logical way that he could have arrived at that store before me, even if he got into a car further down the road, I was well ahead of him, and the time it took for me to park and enter the store was no more than 30 seconds. It's freaked me out because I'm a logical person, and I can't for the life of me figure this out. This submitter has an edit that includes, Also, my next door neighbor has CCTV, and I asked her to check to see if there was a guy standing on our drive at the time, and sure enough, he was there. I had to ask because I thought I was going crazy. Several years ago, I was driving along westbound I-44, planning to get off at the second roll of Missouri exit to head towards Salem to visit my former mother-in-law. It was dark outside, but not super late, and my daughters were with me. They were probably around 10 or 12 years old at the time. It felt like we'd been on the highway too long, but we still hadn't reached the first Rolla exit, so I assumed I was just misjudging how long I'd actually been driving for. Then I came to the rest area that's a little ways past Rolla, and a deep confusion set in that freaked me right the hell out. Freaked my girls out too, because none of us understood how we could have passed Rolla without seeing it. It's a college town with at least three highway exits and you can't drive past them all without noticing at least some of the town lit up. Yet, we did, somehow. Or maybe the town just was straight up not there when we passed through. I honestly don't know. I turned the car around at the rest area and headed back towards where Rolla should have been 
and had always been until that night. And there it was. Now, there's no way that all three of us missed it the first time. It just wasn't there. WTF. One night, during the summer of 2021, a friend and I were driving around northern Illinois. We both saw a black square on the bottom of the moon. We were completely sober and well-rested when we saw this, but it freaked us out. Our first thought was that it could possibly be a new building in the distance, a new tall building that we were viewing from a weird angle that somehow blocked the moon. But even this idea seemed very unlikely to us. There were some trees around us, so I drove to an open field to get a better look at it, and to our surprise, there was no building. Nothing was obstructing our view at all. The moon was flickering a bit like a broken screen. It lasted for a minute, then went back to normal. I think my friend tried to take a video, but it didn't show up very well. I'll have to ask her to double check, though. I know she definitely remembers the incident, because we bring it up every so often. Has anyone ever seen the moon do this? I've seen videos of moon waves, but this was entirely something different. I know I found another post on here where someone claims to have seen the same thing that I did, but it was in 2006, which is really, really freaky. I was wondering if anyone else has had any similar experiences or ideas of what this could have been. So basically, a few months ago, my friends and I were driving around town when we get to this mile or two long stretch of road that passes through a bunch of fields. I live in the Midwest, so that's pretty common. And we noticed that every single car only on the opposite side of the road all pulled over all at once. I thought, huh, must be an emergency vehicle approaching, but no, there was nothing. Now keep in mind, all the cars on my side of the road were still driving normally. After a bit, I noticed that first of all, it's a weird amount of cars on the road since I live in a somewhat small town, but I also noticed that every single freaking car we pass, all of the occupants are staring dead ahead, and one by one, as I personally pass these people, they all of a sudden continue driving like nothing happened. Now, you think that's weird, but it happened down the entire stretch of road until we got to the stop sign at the end of the road, which is a T-shaped intersection. And I noticed that every car to my left and right of me are pulled over as well. As I continue driving after the stop sign, all the cars to my right all start driving at the same time, and all the cars on my left do the same thing. Right as I pass them, they just pull back onto the road and they keep driving. This happens down the entire stretch of that road as well, and once we get to the end, it's just business as usual. Another side note, I told this story to a friend of mine who believes a bunch of conspiracies and stuff like that, and even before I said what road it happened on, he knew exactly what road I was on because one time, him and his mom were driving on that same road and they kept passing the same stuff over and over again. Here's the TLDR. Me and a group of friends passed a bunch of cars pulled over for no reason, and they all kept driving as soon as I passed them. This glitch happened to me a few years ago. I live in the valley, and I've been living here for the past 13 years, so I'm very familiar with the city streets. One night, around 8 p.m., my best friend and I were watching movies and we got hungry. We hopped in my car and headed for some food. I had just made a left turn onto the street of the restaurant when all of a sudden, this old-school-looking red car with black trim came down the opposite side of the street, zooming. He was going straight. It caught our attention immediately. We both followed the car with our eyes, my best friend in the passenger seat even turned her head, and it was gone once he crossed the intersection. Just like that. Here's a side note, my best friend and I usually always turn our head when we see a car zooming by, 
because it's usually annoying and we like to make snarky comments. But this time, we both looked at each other and we both asked, where'd the car go? We tried to think logically, assuming the brake lights probably didn't work, but the headlights were on. So even if the brake lights were out, we should have been able to see the car's headlights reflecting on the pavement. The street he went up is a street my best friend and I have been on hundreds of times because it leads up to the park where we frequent that has a view of our city. Even at the speed he was going, there's no possibility that he turned down a street. The nearest opening is about a half mile up from the intersection. We came to the conclusion that he vanished and we never really talked about it again. It wasn't until 2021 when I discovered what a glitch in the matrix was and that I now consider that situation might have been a glitch in the matrix after hearing weird car stories from others. Thank you for reading. So my partner, my sibling, and I were on vacation. We got there later than anticipated on our first day, but we still really wanted to see the beach even though it closed within the hour. We drove to the nearest access, hiked down the dune, and spent about 30 minutes just sitting by the water. No one else was there. The waves kept getting more intense, and we decided the water was telling us that it was probably time to leave. I looked at the time as we were getting up. It said 11.12 p.m. We picked up our stuff, and my sibling looked at their phone just before we began trekking back, and it said 11.15 p.m. That's three minutes. Now, it was a pretty lengthy and steep hike back up the dune, and my sibling has kind of a bum leg. It took us about five minutes to get from the car, which was at 10.42 when we got out, down the dune, and then to the beach, which was at 10.47 when we'd been on the beach for seconds at that time. Now, my partner had gone back up to the car almost immediately, and they texted me, by the way, it's going to take you 20 minutes to get back up, because it had taken them a while. They're also more physically fit than me or my sibling. I didn't get the text until we were back in the car due to no signal though. So again, it took us three minutes to clean up our stuff and it was 11.15 when we began going back. About halfway up, we had to stop and sit on a bench for at least two or three minutes to catch our breath, drink some water, cool down, and rest my sibling's leg. We weren't moving fast by any means whatsoever, and we had to stop again and stand for a minute before we finally reached the top. When we did, we got in the car, and the time on our phones said 11.19 p.m. My sibling immediately said, we shifted realities, and honestly, that's the only logical explanation that I can come up with. <laughs> There's no way that we both read our phones incorrectly. They're both military time, for those that care. Now, how the F did we make it back up in less time than it took us to get down? This person also includes an edit that says, I also remember crossing my fingers that it wasn't after midnight. It seemed to take forever, and I honestly would have believed it if it had been after midnight. I was anxious that it was taking us as long as it was, and I was expecting my partner to show up any moment because we'd been gone forever. Looking back, how that walk back felt in the moment was weird AF. It felt like the time slowed way down and we were moving so slowly. Internally, we were both fighting for our lives too, but I figured that was just because we weren't necessarily in great shape and we both very likely have POTS. And my sibling's leg was really messed up. He had a dislocated knee that they dealt with regularly, but had issues getting it back relocated that time and wasn't fully mobile. I could feel every bit of blood and tissue, every vibration in my body, and I was hyper aware of my heart, the blood pumping through it, what the beats felt like deep in my chest, and then it felt like I could follow the blood throughout my entire body. My head and thinking process felt weird. It was really fuzzy, kind of jelly and slow in the deepest parts of my brain. I, I really don't know how to describe it. It was kind of like everything around me was blurred out because there was so much going on within, like my tissues had become TV static and focusing on them and my ability to think was the only way to keep it all together and make it to the top. 
I can't speak for my siblings' experience, although I am going to ask them about it, but shortly after we sat down, we talked about how fast and hard our hearts were beating, how odd it all felt, and about how it stopped all of a sudden and seemed to be in balance again, just like that. Then we started walking again, and the pressurized, hyper-aware feelings came back. For me, it was definitely different from being out of breath due to physical activity. And then, this time before we stopped and stood for a few seconds, it all stopped like nothing had been out of balance, which is also very different from our typical experiences with physical exercise. It was so weird, and we talked about how weird it was in the moment, too. It could definitely just be oxygen deprivation and or blood pressure fluctuation, but man, it was so strange. Alright, so check this out. This happened 10 years ago, when I was 16. I remembered this experience just yesterday, and I had to tell you. I was living on and in the Mornington Peninsula, which is in Victoria, Australia, Rosebud to be exact, when I went to see my family in Melbourne. I would take the bus to Frankston, and then a train to Melbourne. The bus trip always took around an hour, maybe a little bit longer. But on this one occasion, when I was heading from Rosebud to Frankston via that same bus, I met someone on it and we started talking. It only felt like 30 minutes of talking and we hadn't reached Frankston yet, of course. And all of a sudden, I received a call from my dad, who I was traveling to visit that day. He was acting a bit aggravated, asking me where the heck I was, and I responded with, Dad, I'm on the bus like I told you I was 30 or 40 minutes ago. He went off, calling me a liar, and I was super, super confused and I started questioning what I did wrong. What he said scared and confused the crap out of me. He said I couldn't be on the bus because it's been three hours since I left. I checked the time and lo and behold, it was three hours later, yet I was on the same bus that hadn't even reached Frankston nor had any detours. I asked the people on the bus to check the time and how long we were on the bus for, and they checked and looked up at me slowly, with wide eyes, also frazzled, by how the hell time could have jumped. I repeatedly tried to assure my dad that I was still on the same bus, and I don't understand how the time jumped. Obviously, I just probably sounded nuts, so he never believed me. That experience hasn't happened again, and I still try to find a logical explanation to this day. Does anyone have any ideas? Did anyone else experience people just disappearing off the face of the earth? Temporarily, of course. <laughs> Temporarily, of course. I was at a New Year's Eve dinner with my parents, my uncles, and some cousins, just a bunch of family. And this was in Argentina, and it's the summertime, and we're all eating outside. It was a big, white, round table. At some point, I went in the house, I don't remember why or how long, maybe to go to the bathroom or to get a drink. And when I came out, everybody was gone. Everyone and everything was gone, like no one had ever dined there. I looked around the yard, I went back inside the house, which is an open concept and it's hard to hide a bunch of people in there, but didn't see anything. I don't even think I heard crickets. After searching for about 10 minutes, I go sit inside the house to think, and then I hear the toilet flush. My cousin comes out and I tell her that everyone's gone. She looks at me weird and then she leaves. At this point, I'm waiting for her to come back and tell me that I'm crazy, but she doesn't, so I start panicking. I muster the courage to go outside and there's everybody again, eating at the same table as if nothing happened. I went to my seat and I asked what had happened, asked them where they went, but everyone looked at me like I had a third eye. I've always thought that I might be some kind of crazy, but... I was telling my friend this last week and she matter-of-factly told me about glitches in the Matrix and how this stuff happens all the time. So I already feel a little bit better knowing that I may not be losing it. 
has anyone ever had a similar experience? I mean, I've had this happen with objects, but never with people. I have a lot of shoes, but I don't have any doubles. I have one pair of everyday shoes that are black on black Samoa Adidas. These are pretty much my most comfortable shoes and I've only owned one pair ever in my life and I've had this pair for 10 years. I've never bought any other pair of Adidas shoes. I have two different sets of boots, I have some white tennis shoes, and I have some nice dress heels and sandals and flip flops and shower shoes and house slippers but I have one single pair of black-on-black -black Samoa Adidas. These shoes are great quality and have lasted me a really long time and I've never even considered replacing them. And nobody else that I know of has these shoes. My son has gigantic feet and if he somehow even had the same pair, they would be a men's 16, so I really don't understand how my black-on-black -black Samoan Adidas doubled. I got home from work and I changed out of my work shoes. I took off my work clothes and I put on my comfy clothes. I keep my black adidas on the left side of my bed tucked under the box spring. I pulled them out and I slipped them on and I went for a jog. I came home, I took off my clothes to jump in the shower and when I got out I picked up my shoes and I placed them back under my bed where they go and there's already a pair of black adidas, my exact size in that spot. I had just pulled these shoes from that spot to go jogging. It's not like I pulled my shoes from a different location and I somehow have always had two pairs and just never noticed. No, this is exactly where I pulled them from, but there's already a pair of these shoes sitting right under there, right under my bed. I pulled them out to investigate and the wear and tear is exactly the same, which you can expect is pretty significant for shoes that I've worn nearly daily for 10 years. The nicks on the side of the spot where my foot hit the gravel when I fell a couple of years ago, it's all the same. I pulled out both sets and I had four shoes in front of me. I was sitting there just feeling like my brain was broken and I knew what I was seeing, but it didn't make any sense, so therefore it must be incorrect somehow. I left both pairs out specifically so that when my son got home from school, I could ask him what the heck is going on. I mean, I half expected him to say that he found the exact same pair in the same size in one of our community areas and thought that they were mine, so he brought them home to me. Well, my son does come home from school and I bring him into my room to show him that I now have four shoes when I should only have two, and he thinks I'm crazy because now there's only two shoes on the ground, not four, and I know, I know that I wasn't imagining it. What do you think happened? Do you think the other me and some other plane of existence is freaking out because their shoes vanished? <laughs> I've had so many glitches over the years and I'm in my 40s now and ever since I learned my unusual experience had a name and a community, I've been following this sub. This event happened about two years ago, and my mom has since passed. Because I don't interact with Reddit much other than reading, I didn't have the proper status to post it the day after it happened, but hopefully it'll work and will still be interesting. It haunts me even now. I took my 80-something-year-old mom to a doctor's appointment in an outpatient hospital center that we've never been to before. We walked in, and I got my visitor pass from the info desk. The lobby was nice, with a player piano in the lobby, music playing. I put her in a wheelchair to move quicker up the elevator, and we proceeded to the third floor. Once we got to the doctor's office and she checked in, I said I would go move my car from the 15-minute parking in front of the building to the paid lots and hope to get back to the doctor's office in time to accompany her to her appointment. Now, this is an oncology doctor, so it's rather important that my second set of ears hear what the doctor has to say. I walk out to the four elevators in the bank, from which we just exited. There was one person waiting and no elevators on the third floor, so I see a stairwell across from the elevator and I decide to run down the steps to save myself some time. 
Also, I just routinely go up and down stairs when I can to save time and burn some energy. I head down one flight to the second floor and then go down again to the first floor and it occurs to me that I'm unsure whether to go to floor M or floor G to get to the main lobby. I go down one more flight and I see a locked door which clearly says no entrance so I go down one more flight thinking that that should be my floor but there are no more doors to exit the stairwell. It just ended with a dead end with walls and no door at all at the bottom of the final step. So I bound back up the steps and I exit on the first floor, thinking that I'll see the four elevators in the bank and then just go down until I reach the level on which we entered. Well, I do see the elevators and I push the down button and once I'm inside, I see both M, which says Melon Lobby, the correct place I think I need to be, and G as options for going down. I push M. The door opens on M, and this is not the floor which I entered, which was odd. So I go down one more, and the door opens on G, and this is also not the right floor. I go back up to M, again, still incorrect, but this time I exit to make sure that I'm not on a different elevator bank, and or see if anyone is around to ask how to get back to the floor that I need. But no one's around to ask... And there are just closed, seemingly empty office doors. So I get back on and I proceed to write up and down from G to M to 1, 2, 3, over and over a few times, never really getting where I need to be. At this point, I'm anxious because I still need to move my car and get back to the office. So I get out on the first floor where I exited the stairwell originally and I go back up the steps to the third floor. I get out of the stairwell to see the elevators that I got off with my mom. I push the down arrow and I get on, thinking if I did somehow get on a different elevator bank, this will recreate my steps exactly, so I can go down the exact same way I went up. I see the same options for down, just 2, 1, M, and G, and from what I can tell, this is the same elevator I've been using all along. I push all the buttons. The door opens on the second floor, then first, still wrong, then opens on M, wrong, and then G, guess what, wrong. Now I'm totally anxious because I can't figure out what is happening or how to even get to the exit and it's starting to creep me out. At this point, I remember that there are a lot of glitches when it comes to elevators and I just think to myself, enough with this already and I just go back up to the third floor. I close my eyes, I stay on the elevator, and then I push M, then I push G. I tell myself I have to move my car now, so this has to work. The door opens on M, I see the same lobby, and I hear the same piano music, and I know I finally made it. I move my car, and then I run back inside. All in all, it was about 15 minutes from when I left the doctor's office originally to finding the correct floor. I have no clue what happened and I have no logical explanation for how I could write up and down so many times and still not find the correct floor. This person was playing the elevator game. Hi, I wasn't sure if I wanted to post this at first, but the more I think about it, the more that I realize I just can't explain what happened. A couple of weeks ago, I was out grocery shopping. Afterward, I stopped for gas as I was below a quarter tank. No issues there. I got home, took the groceries in through the front door, and I put them away. About an hour later, I was getting ready to go to work, and I couldn't find my wallet. I had it to pay for the gas, so it must be in my car. Well, I tore apart my car, and I found no wallet. Now I was starting to freak out. I can't go to work without my wallet. It has the car that opens the gate to the parking garage. At this point, I could barely even make it to work on time. My wife was going to see a friend and was getting ready to leave herself. She got in her car, which was in the closed garage, and my wallet was right there on her driver's seat. Even weirder, the receipt for the gas was in her passenger seat. I never went into the garage. I park outside. And I usually don't even drive her car. 
Yet my car had a full tank of gas and hers was at about a half tank. She asked me why I was in her car and I swore to her that I wasn't. I have no idea what happened or why my wallet was in her car. I even checked the engines. Hers was cold and mine was still warm. I think this was a real glitch in the matrix. I've never experienced a glitch before and honestly this messed me up pretty good. I do realize in the big picture this is probably minor, but still, what the fuck, man? This happened just a few years ago. It was the summer that I was about to become a freshman in college. A short story, but still creepy. A few months before this specific incident, I absolutely could not find my high school ID anywhere. I don't remember exactly why I needed it, but I knew that I did. I vividly remembered putting it inside my drawer with my other important ID cards that I keep, and I couldn't find it for the life of me, even after tearing my whole drawer apart. I eventually gave up and forgot about it. A few months later, a few days before freshman year of college, I was about to open my closet door, and before I could even open the door, I saw it. It was staring right at me just sticking out on the very tippy top of my closet door in between the top door frame and the very top of the door. It was there, and I had absolutely no idea how it ended up there. I just stood there in silence in shock for a few minutes, just staring at it in complete disbelief. How did it end up there? Now, mind you, I had opened up my closet door a few times that week, once that day, and I never saw it. I know I would have obviously noticed it, it was literally sticking out. Also, why would I put it in my closet, let alone the very top shelf, and even more let alone not even in a purse or anything? How would it end up literally sitting on the top of the door between the frame, if, let's say, I did put it on the top shelf? I mean, it makes no sense. I asked my mom because she's the only other one that goes in my room, and she had no idea either and said that she hadn't touched it or seen it, or anything. We were both in disbelief. It still makes no sense to me to this day on how it even ended up getting there, or why it got there. It was also pretty creepy considering the fact that it was two days before my freshman year of college, and ironic how my freshman year high school ID just pops up out of nowhere, when I had forgotten about it. To this day, I still have no idea what happened. I'm now in my junior year of college, and I can confirm that my high school ID hasn't disappeared again. At least, I hope so. Still, super creepy, right? This peculiar event happened to me while I was in my early 20s, so between 2008 and maybe 2013. I was a bit of a transient then and often slept outside or squatted in houses that were foreclosed upon or up for sale, a few nights at most. Most neighborhoods I wandered through day to day had a community pool, if not several. Oftentimes I would use these pool areas to bathe, and they had showers in the community rooms, or I would sleep if I thought I could get away with it. One night in particular, I went to my most frequented pool. I could reach over the large gate and open it from the other side. At this pool, I would always clumsily maneuver a reclining chair closest to the wall and next to a large pump for the spa. I would do this to stay out of sight from the golf and the tennis courts. I only describe the area so that you might have some context as to what I'm telling you. While I was trying to fall asleep, I opened my eyes and I saw a jagged silhouette dance about the semicircle wall that enclosed the pump right beside me. At first I thought it was headlights or the police. I raised myself onto my tippy toes to peer over the stucco wall that I just had my back to, thinking now I feel my reaction was one of hurried panic. I exited through the gate and I walked quickly around a short path up to the parking lot where I encountered the source of light. It was a motorcycle. It was on fire. I stared as I walked past it and then out of the parking lot onto the sidewalk. I looked back at it every few steps just to look on in amazement. 
The fire seemed to be escalating, devouring more of the vehicle all the time. A car passed me as I walked down the sidewalk, now about 20 meters away from the scene. I knew whoever was in that car would see the now engulfed bike and they would probably blame me as it was very late, or early, I guess, and I was the only person around. I continued to walk away quite fast and then I heard a dull explosion and then the crunching of metal. I looked back and the motorcycle had fallen over. I turned the corner onto 214th Way, a street that I had lived on and would live on again later in my life, and I was out of sight. I don't know if this is a glitch per se, I don't even know what happened. I can tell you that the motorcycle wasn't there when I first approached the clubhouse and I heard no motor or any noises that were similar. Like I said, I was lying on a chair that was up against the wall and on the other side was the parking lot. The motorcycle was parked in like what was to be the best spot if they were visiting the pool. I never fell asleep either as I don't fall asleep so easily and I'm often awake for hours before I ever doze. I hadn't thought of this event in a while, though I have told a few close friends. I tried to give uh, an accurate retelling so that one might be able to offer some insight. So what do you think? The most logical thing that I can think of would be that somebody rolled their bike up to the spot, ignited a fire, and walked away. But maybe for tax purposes? To frame me? I did have some friends, who were my brothers, who lived in the neighborhood that rode motorcycles, but I don't think either one would have done that. And like I said, I would have heard something, most likely. Thank you for reading my story. I just found out about this subreddit via a YouTube video that reminded me of this weird event that happened to me a couple of years ago. I was driving on the highway, going down the main hill in my city. It's super snowy, and it's nighttime. There's a train bridge that's above the highway that I'm approaching. Also, I'm in the left lane of two lanes. All of a sudden, I hit ice, and I start swerving, and then spinning down the hill. I do three 180 degree rotations diagonally into the right lane. After the first 180, I see a white car in the right lane, and I remember thinking, man, I hope they don't hit me. I hope they get in the other lane. By the way, now time really does slow down during accidents like this. I had enough time to think of a plan and diagram the whole situation in my head and protect myself, everything, because I noticed that I was going to hit the guardrail next to the cement holding up the train bridge. After another 360, the car in the right lane is still in the right lane and is ever closer, and I don't have enough room to spin again. There's about a foot left before I crash. I remember thinking, is this guardrail going to smash my window? So I decided to just huddle into a ball and brace for impact. I also pulled my hood over the side of my face in case glass shattered at my face and squeezed my eyes closed. 10 seconds go by, 20 more. I'm not sure how long, but I peeked one eye open because nothing was happening. I should have opened my eyes to a car headlight coming at me, but instead, my car is in park. I'm in my own lane, which is the left lane again, and my car is facing forwards, still in park. The car that I was careening towards had passed me. It was a huge WTF moment for me. I kind of assumed it was a guardian angel or a spirit or something, but I also do love the simulation theory as well, as I'm not really religious. But it never crossed my mind to be a glitch in the Matrix until I saw these YouTube videos. Huh. You think they're talking about my videos? <laughs> when I was 15 or maybe 16, I was getting ready to walk out of the door with my mom and drive to school. I forgot something in my room, so I put my backpack on the dining room table. My mother was there and watched me put it on the table. She goes to the car, and I come back, and suddenly, there's no backpack. Literally was in the middle of the table before, and now it's gone. My mom comes back in, confused as to why I'm taking so long, and I told her that I couldn't find my backpack. And she's confused because she saw me put it on the table, 
and then we start looking everywhere for it. We tore apart the dining room and found nothing. The living room, nothing. The kitchen, my room, nowhere. We're both super frustrated at this point, so we walk back into the dining room, and I see my backpack sitting right smack dab in the middle of the table. We both know 100% as a fact that it wasn't there when we were searching, but somehow it came back. It honestly spooked us for a little bit, but then we went on about our days. Huh. So, like a year ago, my mom, my brother, and I are all packing to go to my cousin's house to stay for Thanksgiving Day. I packed my phone and a charger into my bag. When we got there, I took it out and I charged it, and then we had dinner and stayed for a while. I honestly don't remember if I put my phone back in my bag or not, but I know that my mom took the charger back with us. Anyway, it was time to go and we drove back to my mom's house. My mom and dad are divorced, so I lived with her at the moment. But when I got home, my phone wasn't in my bag. I looked everywhere, and then I looked in my mom's car everywhere that I possibly could. I couldn't find it. I assumed I just left it at my cousin's house and forgot to bring it back. But my cousin couldn't find it anywhere in their house either. So I just went without a phone for like four months until I was allowed to get a new one. I started living with my dad again this May, and last month I was in the spare room with a bunch of boxes and movies, and I found my phone sitting on a chair in that room. I asked my dad where it came from, and he said that he had found the phone like a month prior in the room and he just left it there. I had a new phone by then, plus my old one was cracked and barely working, so that's why he didn't tell me. So basically, I lost my phone at my cousin's and then it reappeared at my dad's house, I hadn't even gone to his house until six months after I lost my phone. None of us had even gone over to his house until way after the phone was lost, and my dad didn't come with us to my cousin's house. Was this a glitch in the Matrix? Alright, so check this out. The day it happened, nothing was out of the ordinary or different. I went to my 8 to 5 job like any other day and it wasn't until I got to the grocery store after work when things got strange. I went to my local grocery store but it, it felt off. I usually see the same people but that day was different. I saw people I've never seen before and even the employees were some I've never seen. When I was picking out items, some seemed to be in another language but I assumed it was just a brand change. Then I went to check out and the woman cashier started to speak to me. Whatever she was speaking, it wasn't English or Spanish, which are the only two languages I know. I started to speak to tell her that I didn't understand, but I started speaking back to her in whatever language that was. It honestly felt like I was looking at the situation from outside of my own body. Like I was just the soul inside and the body was talking for me. We carried on a conversation for about five minutes until I was all checked out. When I walked back to my car, I sat there for a solid ten minutes before driving off. I told my partner, who I lived with at the time, and they told me to stay away from the internet and laughed at me. I went back to that store two days later and I saw people I knew, the employees were the ones that I'd seen for years, and the brands had all their regular names on it. This happened a little over a year ago, and that memory still haunts me every day. Some people say it was probably a dream that felt like real life, but I know what I saw and felt. That was not a dream. No one believes me, no matter how many details I give. I went to Ace Hardware yesterday for a single item that I can only find there. I go to this specific store maybe twice a year so I don't know anyone by name or by face. As I set down my item at the register, the cashier says my name. I'm used to wearing a name tag at work so I just say, yep. She asks for my phone number and I provide it for her to type into the system. She confirms my name as it pops up on her screen. 
I'll add that my name is a fairly uncommon one as well. At this point, I realized that she had said my name twice now, but there's no way she could have known it before pulling up my account. I called her out and I said, you know, I swear you said my name before I gave you my phone number. We make eye contact for a second and at the exact same time, in complete synchronicity, we both say, must, must be a glitch in the matrix or something. I stood there wide-eyed and slightly stunned. She seemed completely unaffected. She broke eye contact and said my total is on the screen. I laughed nervously, finished my transaction, and I left. My brain went many places trying to explain what had happened. Facial recognition? In a fucking Ace hardware of all places? No way. Maybe she knew me. I've definitely never seen this woman, though. Am I on some kind of list? Is she an all-seeing, all-knowing demigorgon? Maybe. Glitch in the Matrix? Probably not, but I thought it would be fun to share. Earlier this year, my husband went through a terrifying, life-threatening thing, and not to get into any details, but at the point of the story, he was still bed-bound and we were staying at my parents' house. Here's some relevant information. My parents' house is a big, two floors and a rooftop apartment, plus a basement. It's pretty old, though, and needs something fixed every other month or so. My dad is very old school, and he deals with people he likes even if they overcharge him. He's been using the same plumber for years, the same electrician, same gardener. You get it. Also, this happened back in my home country of Jordan, the country is mostly Muslim, but my family is Christian. So, we wake up that day and the whole kitchen is flooded. My dad had recently gotten a new water filter installed and it was giving them trouble since the beginning. My dad had to leave, but he called his water filter guy, which I know is hella specific, but he calls him to come fix whatever is going on. Water filter guy said he'll be there in a couple of hours. About an hour later... The doorbell rings and my brother opens the door. It's a man in a suit with a little briefcase. My brother thought it was one of the doctors for my husband, so he immediately invited him in. And the man immediately corrects him and says, no, he's not the doctor. He's there for the water filter. My mom knows the water filter guy, and this wasn't him, but she just assumed that the original guy just sent this guy ahead so my mom asks what he needs. I'm in and out of the whole situation as I care for my husband. And the man goes to the roof to look at the water tanks and he takes pictures. He came back down and sat in the kitchen with my mom, telling her what he thinks the issue is. He says the tanks need to be replaced and how much that'll cost and all those things. And so my mom calls my dad and passes the phone to the man who gives my dad the rundown and then my dad says he'll talk to his original guy about the price. The man starts arguing with my dad on the phone to the point where my dad basically yells at him and then hangs up. At this point, my mom kind of apologetically asks him to leave and that my dad will just talk to his boss because that's what he prefers. The man says, what boss? My mom names the boss and the man sitting there says he's never heard of that guy before in his life. Now my mom is freaking out and she asks who sent him and he says, nobody. So she asks him how much she owes him so that she can quickly get him out of the house. He says he noticed the man in the hospital bed and his only payment is that he's going to ask God to heal him. And then he left and that was it. My dad's actual guy showed up a little bit later and he did fix the filter. But my mom and I were shook by the whole thing. We talked about it in detail for hours. We talked to my dad and my dad's guy and the nurse that was there that day and my brother who opened the door and none of us could figure out how this happened or who that man was. This dude just showed up to check our water filters on the same day the water filters burst but didn't want any compensation? Like nobody sent him? How? I don't know, it still bugs me. My mom thinks he's in a freet or a demon, but I just don't know. I was going through a lot at the time, so 
My mind might have not been all there, but everyone else experienced this exact same thing. Can anyone offer any help? Does anyone have any ideas as to what this was? The submitter of this story included an edit. They said they were thankful for everyone leaving comments, asking how the husband was doing, and he's about 90% better and still healing. And they say thank you for the kind words to everyone. This happened a couple of months ago, and my friend and I are still perplexed about it. My friend visited me in my apartment complex. There's two elevators that are next to each other. As we're entering the building, making our way to my apartment, which is on the third floor, and walking towards the elevators, we see a person just entering the left one and the door closing behind them. My friend presses the up button, and naturally, we expect the right elevator to open because we just missed the left one. However, after a short moment, the left elevator opens again, and it's empty. We both looked at each other in pure confusion because we clearly saw someone entering it. We had no explanation as to where this person suddenly disappeared to. We even took the elevator up to the second floor and then back so that we could measure the time, and the fastest time that we got was about 40 seconds, and we were both absolutely certain that when it happened, the door wasn't closed for more than three or maybe four seconds. What do you think? Was it a glitch? Did we see a ghost? Is there any logical explanation? So this event happened almost 15 years ago, and I'm glad that this term, glitch in the matrix, has become so popular because I can finally put a name to my experience. I was out with my best friend who drove me home that day. It was daytime, probably 2 or 3 in the afternoon. I lived in a cul-de-sac, so to arrive at my house, you had to drive to the end of the loop back to halfway up the street to get to my house. Our house was built on a driveway and up some stairs. As my friend drove us around the loop, I saw my mom standing in the driveway, waving to me, wearing clothes that made me assume she was doing yard work. My friend and I chatted for a couple of minutes before I exited the car, and by that point, I noticed my mom wasn't there anymore. I walk inside the house to very wet terracotta tile floors. My mom was on her knees with a bucket cleaning the tiles. I said to her, did you just come inside that fast and start cleaning? My mom says, I wasn't outside, I've been down here doing the floors. I did of course pry, convinced that she was messing with me, but she wasn't. The mom that I saw waving to me has her same exact face, but she was wearing different clothes than what she was now when I see her inside. I've even brought it up over the years to see if she slips up and admits it, but we still trip out at this. I've questioned my sanity lots since this happened, and as the years have passed, it seems more unbelievable every year. But it happened, and I know for a fact that it did. I'm not sure if I'm imagining things, or if I'm going crazy, but I believe I just saw my future. I mean, I always wondered if people have their future self walking around in the present, and I sometimes wondered if my future self is around too. But I think I should tell you the story. I was just on my way home from work. I'm currently doing an apprenticeship as a metal worker. And due to some unlucky circumstances, I missed my tram and had to take a later one. When I took the next tram, I took a seat next to the door, noticing a man on the opposite side of the door. I didn't pay much attention at first, but then I noticed something on his workwear. I could read the first initial of his first name and his full last name, and that's when I realized that he had the same last name as me, while his first name also started with the same initial as my first name. After realizing that, I took a more exact look at him, and he did look quite similar to me. He had the same hair and eye color had a similar, if not the same, hairstyle that I normally have. My hair is currently longer, but normally I have it 
pretty short, and even his face did look kind of similar to mine. The only real difference was that he was a bit thinner than I currently am. Of course, he was a bit older, but still, the physical similarities were there. And since I already mentioned his workwear, he was wearing blue overalls, looking similar to the ones that I was wearing, although I was wearing black overalls on the day. But it was the same workwear which you would expect a metal worker to wear at work. It didn't stop there, though. He was apparently working for a craftsman company that also seemed to have focus on electrical engineering. This has also caused me to believe that this man could be my future self, simply because I was planning on investing two more years at my local academy of technology in order to become a state certified technician. And while I'm currently working on becoming a metal worker, I'm also open to becoming an electrical engineer, especially if the salary is higher than the one I have now. The man even apparently lives in a part of my town where I always wanted to live due to the close proximity of our local botanical garden. So, yeah, I'm not sure if my mind is playing tricks on me here or if I'm really just going crazy. Or if I actually saw my future self, but I definitely wanted to share my story with you. Tell me if you've ever had this happen to you. I'm scared that this may be a medical issue, but I thought I'd post here because I'm spooked. Whether I'm talking to someone or watching a show or in my apartment listening to people outside on the street, I've been experiencing double hearing. It happens quickly. I'll hear the first few words or phrases of a conversation, and then all of a sudden it'll get repeated in the exact same way and tone and continue on normally as if nothing happened. No one else notices though. The thing is, when this happens, I'm never paying attention to the lips of whoever is speaking. I'm either multitasking or looking away or talking to someone from another room when I unmistakably hear the same exact phrase or sentence twice, back to back, clear as day, as if a rewind button was pressed. I hope this isn't a mental issue and just a problem with my hearing. The second repeated conversations always play out normally and smoothly. It's like the initial foreshadowing conversations that get cut short, which makes the experiences glitch-like, if that makes any sense at all. Anyway, it happened a handful of times yesterday, way more than usual. And I'm new to glitches, so I'm scared, and I hope that someone can enlighten me on what the F is going on. Here's a bit of context. There's only three of us in this house. It's me, my mom, and my dad. About two weeks ago, my girlfriend bought me this soap box because I started to pay for my own stuff a while ago, and that includes soap, shampoo, and other toiletries, and I so far had been using a small Tupperware to keep my soap and all my toiletries in. Another important fact is that I buy Dove soap. No one else in this house buys that soap. My mom would rather go for another brand, and my dad too. So this box is a fairly simple, deep blue plastic box with four small hinges. There's nothing really special about it. So I've been using this box for about two weeks now, and I usually put it back in my toiletries drawer. Yesterday, I noticed that I had left it in the shower. Nothing unusual, I forget to pack it back in sometimes. I left it there in the shower, since I was already heading in there. It wasn't until I went to fetch my shampoo bottle from my toiletries drawer that I noticed that I had indeed put my soapbox in my drawer since it was right there under the shampoo bottle. I took both out, and fair enough, they're the same box with even the same brand of soap that I use, and I remember distinctly that my girlfriend bought me one of these boxes. I never had two. So in the moment, I freak out a little bit, but I quickly calm down since I was obviously jumping to conclusions. Either one of my parents could have bought this box at the very same store that my girlfriend did. Right after my shower, I asked my dad, and he said he'd never seen this box before in his life. My mom, on the other hand, was already sleeping, so I text her a picture of the box with the soap in it and a video of me turning it around 
and showing it properly to her so that I can get an answer as soon as she wakes up. We don't wake up at the same time of day. Apparently, I was right to freak out about it since she confirmed it isn't hers. I honestly don't know what to think, but I mean, hey, <laughs> free soap, right? Okay, I'm completely shocked and I have no clue where to post this, so I'm sorry if it doesn't belong. I live in a major city in the Midwest and I went to take my dog to the dog park after I finished working. It's a pretty small dog park and I can see all sides of it when I'm there. It was just her and I in there and I noticed a pigeon fly into the tree and sit on a tree branch. I thought it was a little strange because we don't get many pigeons near where we're at in the city but just brushed it off and began to play with my dog. About two minutes later, I hear a thud and I see that the bird has fallen out of the tree. I went to inspect the bird and I noticed that his head was clean off and his chest was ripped open. The head was nowhere to be found, by the way. I didn't hear anything prior to the bird falling and the bird looked fine when I first saw it land on the tree. My dad thinks that a hawk could have gotten at it, but again, I didn't hear or see anything before the bird fell and we don't get much wildlife where I'm at. I am so confused. What in the world do you think could have happened? Okay, so this is gonna sound crazy because I know how it sounds, but trust me when I say this felt too real to be part of my imagination. Basically, I watch my little cousin from time to time and my auntie always leaves the keys for me. Now, this key was different, but I didn't have it in me to question it because I thought my cousin left his keys, but it opened the doors with no problem at all. There were three keys to it with a lanyard to it as well, and when I got inside, I put the stuff down and my auntie's keys were on the counter. I thought she forgot them. After telling my auntie this, I tried looking for the keys that I used to open the doors before, but they were gone. They were literally nowhere in sight, just gone. I know this sounds crazy, but I felt them. I saw them and I used them, but now they were nowhere to be found and everyone had their own set of keys. So what key did I use? How did I get inside? And where are those keys now? I can tell you exactly how they looked, how they felt, but I don't have proof because I don't have the keys anymore. They just... <laughs> They disappeared. It's like I pulled them out of thin air, and they disappeared after it served its purpose. I honestly want some answers because now it looks like I'm going crazy, when I clearly know what I saw, I used, touched, and know. But how can I explain this? My cousins probably think it's a scene from a movie, but it felt too real. I mean, it was real. And to complete this crazy day, my cousin said something that made me feel like I've lived this day before. What the heck is happening? I'm seriously freaking out. I had originally planned to read another story here called My Boyfriend and I Just Experienced Two Different Realities, and the time between them giving me permission to read the story and me actually recording the story, they've deleted the post um, on the subreddit, so I can't read it. I'm a little bummed out because it's got a lot of upvotes, but I'm reading the comments now, and most of them, almost all of them, mention something about checking for gas leaks and updating their carbon monoxide detector, so maybe it was just a wild dream. I don't know. We'll never know. There might be a reality that exists where I actually get to read this story, but... This one that you and I share right now is not it. All right, so check this out. I had just recently purchased my house and my old washer and dryer wouldn't fit. And plus they sucked and my wife hated using them. So she sent me on a mission to buy a new set. I didn't do my research and as I'm standing in the Lowe's appliance department coming to grips with what I'm up against, my contractor neighbor walked up behind me. 
He helped me pick out the exact units I was going to purchase. I bought them, and then life got weird for a few minutes. When I got to the truck with my two large boxes, there stands my neighbor waiting for me. I thought he was waiting to help me load them, but he just looked at the boxes and said something like, that's a gas dryer, we don't have gas. I bust his balls for a couple of minutes about helping me pick the wrong units out, and it was as normal an interaction as I could have had. I went inside to do the return walk of shame on the items I literally never even left the parking lot with. My neighbor walked to his truck. I'm at the return counter and the girl behind the register asks me my name. I told her and handed her my receipt from five minutes ago while explaining the situation. Without even looking up at me, she says again, name? I tell her my name for a second time and she says nothing while typing into the computer. In comes my neighbor to the return desk with a gallon of paint. He waits in line behind me, saying nothing. The girl behind the register looks up at me and says, Name, sir? I tell her my name now for a third time, pointing to the receipt on the counter, and try to explain the situation again. She types into the computer some more, and for what was probably a solid minute, says nothing at all. Another girl at the return desk finishes with another customer and comes over to help. The new girl says to me, while they both stare into the computer screen, Name? A fourth time, I give them both my name. Without taking their eyes off the screen, the new girl says, and I shit you not. I'm sorry, sir, but you don't exist. I got sort of lightheaded after she said that because I was already thinking about how strange this was. I said back, I don't exist or I'm just not in your system. Without answering me, the second girl says to my neighbor, Sir, I can help you over here, and moves to the next register as my neighbor walks past me, and without another word to me, returns his paint and then walks out the door. Then, almost as if nothing weird had happened, the first girl just says, My name, here's your return. You'll have to purchase the new ones and we'll refund you the ones you mistakenly purchased. Without even going back to appliances, there behind me stands a guy with the units I needed on a dolly ready to help me buy and load them into my truck. My neighbor was gone, but when I asked him about it, he didn't think there was anything weird about any of that. I, on the other hand, had an existential crisis and only barely managed to hold it together. This person added an edit to include, I understand it's in people's nature to disbelieve me, but it happened exactly like I said. I'm not going to argue in the comments, so take it as you will. If I was going to fabricate a story, it would have had lasers and explosions, not a trip to Lowe's to buy a washer and dryer. I keep a small plastic grocery bag next to me on my bed for used tissues, gum wrappers, empty vapes, and things like that. Every day or two, I throw it away and I get a new one. My bed is too big for the room and there's no room on either side. One side has the wall and the other side has my dresser. It won't even fit a small waste basket. In my haste this morning, the bag, which is a yellow Dollar General bag, evidently slid off my bed and landed on the floor. I needed to get going and needed an ibuprofen before I left to stave off my chronic back pain, so I got it out of my medicine box on top of my dresser and went to put it in my mouth. The yellow Dollar General bag I'd been using for bed trash was lying flat on the floor. Now this is important. I went to put the pill in my mouth and as I still had it in my fingers, I dropped it and I heard it land on the bag. I leaned down to pick it up and I found that I couldn't. So I went to pick up the bag and, well, the pill was inside the bag. And when I say this isn't possible, I mean, there's just no way. It was lying flat. There was no opening on the top even. I inspected the bag for holes and there were none. How in the sweet Kentucky Fried glitch did my pill morph inside the bag? Something else weird happened in my bedroom last week too, and a few months ago, yet another oddity. But this might be the craziest one yet. 
My friend is joking that my bedroom is a portal to another dimension, and I'm beginning to wonder because, really, WTF? This morning, while I was opening the restaurant at which I acquire currency, I went to get a sifting basket out of an ice tub that has two bars in it. That way you can put smaller containers with ingredients and such into the ice. Upon first glance, my head had an issue with the way this basket was sitting in the tub due to the fact that it was sitting down inside of it. It didn't seem right because of the size of the sifting basket. I went to pull the sifting basket out of the tub and was unable to pull the basket out because the size was bigger than the hole it went into. And I tried to turn it long ways and still, the hole was too small. I turn this thing every way possible and try all three holes available to get the job done. After a while, I went and got my manager to see if he could get the damn thing out. And keep in mind, the night crew who cleans kind of just slings things close to where they go, so this was an acceptable place for it to be. He continued to try and pull it out and turn it around and twist it and yada yada yada. He then lays it down and pulls his phone out to try and get pictures to show someone that the basket is stuck and was going to get a screwdriver to take the bar off. But as he's pulling his phone out of his pocket, he then pulls the basket out of this undersized hole and I was watching him and he didn't change the angle of the basket. He changed nothing other than the fact he no longer had any issue pulling it in and out of what is now an oversized hole. He didn't unscrew anything, and that's why he was going to take the picture to explain why we're taking so long to open this section. He looked at me and said he was trying to focus the camera, and when it did, he saw that he could just pull it out, and so he did. I was looking at the basket on the opposite side that was now short enough to pull and angle it out. He also stated that he felt like he went through a loading screen while trying to get his camera to focus. Way back in 2004, I was living with a friend in England. We used to go walking in the countryside, out in the fields and all that. And one time we were out walking, we spied a mini forest type thing towards the edge of a field. Curious, we went over to it. As we approached, we noticed a little pathway or gap in the trees, so we followed it. As we went along the trees, the pathway became like an archway as if the trees were growing into the perfect shape over the path. This went on for ages, maybe half an hour. Eventually, we saw daylight at the end, so we powered on along and made it out of the exit into open air. Outside looked like normal countryside, with the exception of a strange settlement before us. It looked like the buildings were made out of junk, like wooden junk, I guess. There were tiny people, four foot tall, maybe five foot max, and everyone was wearing rags. They were all muddy and unkempt. They stared at my friend and I like we were aliens from another world. There wasn't a road, just a muddy path through the center of the buildings, no power lines, nothing modern. While standing there, I suddenly had this feeling that I had to leave. I said to my friend that we had better go, so we went back the way we came. It was a pity that this happened in 2004, since we didn't have any modern cell phones on hand that we could just take a picture or a video with. Anyway, we went back and discussed it a few times in the intervening months. Eventually, I couldn't stand it anymore and convinced my friend that we had to go back with a digital camera. When we returned, we found the trees and the entrance, but when we followed the path, it only lasted a few minutes and we emerged into another field. A normal field. We walked the perimeter of the trees, turned out to be just a little square of undeveloped, unused land in the middle of four fields. No archway, no village. Suffice it to say, there was no point in taking photos of that. I'm convinced to this day that if we hadn't left when we did, we would still be there, wherever or whenever there is and we would have ended up on another missing persons report. A 
I jumped timelines in a car accident. So this happened when I was fresh 18. I'm now 24. At the time, I was living in Florida with my dad and stepmom, and my now husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, was in jail with no chance of getting out. The day of the accident, I had gotten into an argument with my dad. He told me I had to leave the house, so the plan was that I was going to stay at my boyfriend's parents' house until I could get on my feet. So I left my dad's house in Florida and started on my way to Georgia. I did have a feeling not to go, and the signs were always there, I just ignored them. Like when I stopped at a gas station and left my keys in the car for two hours. Still, those two guys who got through the window for me, bless them. They were working, doing Uber, and stopped to help. Anyways, I was traveling the back roads from Florida and Georgia. I made it to Albany when a wave of anger and sadness hit me. Maybe I knew what was about to happen. I couldn't stop crying when I noticed I passed the first stop sign at a four-way. I told myself I had to slow down, but by the time the next four-way came, I turned to look out the driver window and I saw an 18-wheeler coming for me. Now this is where things go absolutely wrong. I remember vividly seeing an 18-wheeler approach me, my vision cut, probably just from the shock, so I never felt the sensation of being hit. But when I woke up, I was over half a mile spun out down the road and someone was trying to give me water. The space between the driver's side door and the middle console was about an inch and a half. That's where I was sitting, so when EMTs came, they had to pull me out of the passenger side door and it wasn't until I got on the stretcher that I felt everything and I couldn't breathe. On the way to the hospital in Albany, I just remember saying that I can't breathe a thousand times. When I got in the hospital, they immediately put me in the SICU because I had a hole the size of a softball in my lung and glass was sitting in it. My pelvis, my tailbone, and my entire left side of my ribcage was broken. I remember telling the nurses to call my mom, my dad, and my in-laws. My mom lived in Louisiana at the time, but she drove from Louisiana and Georgia. That was all I heard before going to sleep in the SICU. The next cognitive memory that I have is waking up and my mom being there. I had apparently slept for three days and I was still in the SICU. When I woke up, the doctor and nurse came in and they let me know that my lung had closed up miraculously overnight, seemingly and that my fractures aren't too bad to heal from and that I was lucky to be alive. I asked about the glass in my lungs. Doctor didn't know what I was talking about. I asked about the broken ribs, the pelvis, and the tailbone, and he said that they had always just been fractures. I asked about the accident. It wasn't an 18-wheeler. It was a Dodge Ram with a massive grill in the front. I was in shock at this point. I spent 11 total days in the hospital that was difficult to walk on fractures. I stayed with my mother for a month while I recovered until somehow my now husband was eligible for bond. I never asked questions, but I moved in with him the same day he was released and we've been married ever since August 2016. Minor things are different now and then. My mom doesn't remember a lot of what I do growing up, but my father in this new reality, had a terminal illness. He had gotten aplastic anemia, which very quickly turned into leukemia. He died within seven months, and that breaks me. It was extremely fast onset and makes me beg the question, was it a life for a life? I probably died once, if not twice, and to restore the balance, a life had to be taken. I've had a couple of odd experiences, but this is probably the strangest one. This happened back in October of this year, so it was a Saturday night around 5 p.m., and I went to the liquor store that's around a 15-minute walk from my house. As I'm walking, I wait at the intersection to cross the street. I notice inside one of the cars the people inside look exactly like my cousin and his girlfriend. 
The thing is, it wasn't them, and they actually were out of the province at the time. I was speaking with him earlier that day. I just chalk it up to me being tired. Anyway, I cross the street, and as I'm outside the liquor store, there's a guy standing outside that looks just like my uncle, only slightly different features. Same mannerisms and everything, though. I actually said hi to him, and he just nodded. He lives around an hour away from me, so there's really no reason that he would be where I'm at. At this point, I honestly start to get a little weirded out. I enter the store and I look around and I notice a guy that looks exactly like one of the guys I went to school with. And I don't mean just a little bit, I mean he looked like an exact replica of him. The only difference was this guy was maybe around 30 or 40 pounds heavier. I actually ended up saying hey to him, but he looked confused and just nodded at me. Now, I'm starting to think I was going crazy. I pick up a bottle of tequila and some Heineken, and I'm waiting in line. I waited about five minutes and finally got called up to pay, and now I'm paying on the register furthest to the left, and there's a giant mirror where you can see behind you. I glance in the mirror and I see another guy that again looks exactly like a co-worker of mine, except slightly different features. At this point, I just ended up speed walking home. The odd part was that something felt off on the walk home. Things just seemed different. You could just chalk this up to me being tired, however following that experience for maybe the next four or five times that I walked in that area. I've experienced the same thing. I'd see a replica version of somebody that I knew. The next time I went, for example, I saw a woman that looked exactly like my aunt, who again, wouldn't be in the area anyway as they live in a different city. Scenarios like this have happened almost every time I go to this area. Has something like this ever happened to you? There was always a weird feeling in the air when I would walk there, like a strange feeling that I can't describe. About 12 years ago, I had to move back in with my mom. I was living in a bedroom at her house, sleeping on a bunk bed. And at the house, my mom had one of our childhood cats still alive, but the cat was very old. We actually put her down not long after this story took place, but that's not related. I had just gotten home, it was the afternoon, and decided I was going to go and lay down on my bed. So I went upstairs, closed my bedroom door, laid down and got comfortable and put the blanket over my head. I hadn't been laying down even two minutes, so I wasn't drifting in and out of sleep or anything. I felt the cat jump up on my bed and then felt her take two or three steps along my side on top of the blankets that were over me. She usually didn't come into my room, so I said, Cat, what are you doing here? And pulled the blanket off of my head and looked down to where the cat should have been, but she wasn't there. My door was still closed, and there was no sign that anything had been walking next to me on the bed. So I got up to get out of bed, went back downstairs, and the cat was asleep on the arm of the couch. There aren't any other creatures in the house at the time, and like I said, it didn't look like there was anything that had disrupted the blanket that was laid out over top of me. I had been laying down long enough that it wasn't the blanket settling either, and it distinctly felt like a cat stepping gingerly across a blanket. And you know that feeling. Here's the TLDR. Was that a ghost cat, or was my cat walking on my bed with her subconscious? I don't know if this counts as a glitch, but I'd just like to share this weird experience that I had years ago. I've only told my girlfriend and a few of my close friends about this, and I was browsing through this subreddit and remembered the experience. So I was commuting on my way to my university. I ride a total of three times to get to my destination. So on the first ride, I saw this kid walking by the sidewalk. He has a white birthmark all around his left eye area. I think he was homeless because he was walking without any slippers or shoes on and his shirt was worn and tattered. I was wondering why there was a kid walking on the highway, but I immediately shrugged it off. 
By the time I got to my second ride, I saw him again, but this time he's in the vehicle with me. I figured it's the same kid because he's got the same birthmark on his eye, he's shoeless, and his shirt was still torn. I got so baffled because, thinking about it, the time frame where I saw him first, and by the time I'm on the vehicle, it's like a 10 or 15 minute distance, and that seems impossible to get to by walking. I remembered taking a picture of the kid because I thought he was a ghost, but hey, I got the picture, so I shrugged it off again and just thought that I was seeing things. Minutes later on the ride, the kid eventually went out of the vehicle and started walking again by the sidewalk. By now I'm on my third ride. I'm riding a train, so I'm on my way to the station, and I was so shocked to see the same kid with the birthmark again near the station, but he was just sitting by the stairs this time. I walked past him, and I never looked back because at this point I was actually scared. I'm really trying to think of a reasonable explanation, but I, I'm struggling. So, does anyone know who or what I saw? This happened many, many years ago, but I've been telling the story ever since, and I thought it would be fun to share and to hear what people think really happened. So, here it goes. I was visiting stores with a dear friend on a weekend. We hadn't seen each other in quite some time because we didn't go to the same school. And we were very loudly catching up and just talking nonstop. Now, mind you, we used to go to this store almost always, and we knew the way by heart, and we could get there without ever really paying much attention. We left the store and walked to the subway. We entered the subway, paid for the ride, walked to where our train would stop, and because it's a two-way train, imagine north and south, and we needed to take the one going south. Again, we knew this way by heart, since almost every weekend we would go to this store. The train arrives, we take the train, and we were still very much into our conversation, but there was a combination, and they always announce it on the speakers. The combination was three stations before where we had to get down. We didn't even need to combine. We hear the announcement, and we keep chatting because it's so fun, right? And I don't even remember what we were talking about, but that's not really relevant. The next thing we hear is the announcement of the same station that we took the train from. Let's call it Station B. So, Station B doesn't have an announcement because it's not in a combination. We're surprised because no one's reacting. We're at the same station that we took the train first, but we did hear station combination, and we did move several stops. Before the doors close, we get down speechless, and all of the loud conversation has died. We looked at each other, and we were in the exact same spot that we took the train about 20 minutes ago. Maybe less. Without saying a word, we changed from south to north. We took another train and saw every name from every station until we reached our destination. We got down and never really knew what happened. What is curious is that they never said anything on the speakers. We have many trains in my city so you can't just move the direction of a train or a collision would happen within minutes. You'd have to change the direction of the entire city, which of course, not possible. No one else in the train seemed to be affected by the situation. Nobody else was like, whoa, what happened? The train's going backwards or something. To this day, I don't know what it was. We also weren't on any substances or alcohol. It was the middle of the day, very sunny, and I wasn't alone. My friend still also remembers that this happened to us. But what do you think caused this? I'm going to do something very out of pocket for a minute. I, you know I don't normally swear super hard on this channel, but uh, if you've got young kids in the room right now, um, change that. Dude, I got some fucking banana bread at work today, dude. Hell yeah. My mom told me that if I wait for things, like, good things will happen to me, dude, and I fucking waited for some things, and I got some banana bread at work today, dude. Hell yeah. So, it just goes to show that waiting for things is, like, worth it. 
But there's a lot of bad things in this world, dude. Like fucking skunks, dude. Hell no. Scratching your eye, but it's still fucking itchy, dude? Hell no. The fucking cubs, dude? Hell no. Like getting paid, not a lot of money, dude? For fucking working? Hell no. But banana bread? At fucking work, dude? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Banana bread, bro? At, at fucking work, dude? Hell yeah. Ha, ha, ha.